Hello everybody, my name is Mark Macy. I'm with the Department of Public Works. And we're so glad that y'all found time to uh, come here today to help us kick off our update to our sidewalk master plan. Uh, I especially want to thank uh, the other metro departments that are engaged in this process. Um, parks, police, planning, MTA, general services, and health. And, and to give you sort of the, the background on all this and why we have all these departments tied into this is this whole program started back in 1999 when we got sued by uh, some people who felt that we weren't doing enough to be, to have our government, our programs accessible by everybody. And so uh, when we went to court uh, in Memphis, it wasn't, it was a relatively short visit because we had nothing to show them. And as an outcome of that visit to court, we agreed that we would prepare programs for all services throughout our government to make uh, Nashville as accessible as possible. One of those documents was to prepare a sidewalk master plan. Um, I see some of my legal people smiling, but it was a, a fast trial and uh, we came out okay. Um, we, we developed our first plan in 2003, I think, and we updated in 08 and we're back again to uh, um, update it again. So I want to point out that as we update the plan, we want to focus that sidewalks and bikes and all of our other programs need to be accessible to everybody. And what, what I may find is not a problem on a sidewalk may be a huge problem to somebody in a chair. So we always got to be thinking about that. Um, I want to introduce uh, our Honorable Megan Berry. Uh, if she can come up, we, uh, we want to hear from her on her ideas of what should be in our master plan. And then we're going to want to hear from everybody here. So Megan, or Thanks. Mayor, come on. Uh, th thanks to Mark and to Jenna Smith for organizing so much of this and, and for getting all of you to come out today to talk about bikes and sidewalks. And there are several other elected officials here today that I want to give a quick shout out to. We have uh, State Representative John Ray Clemens is here. John Ray, where are you? Thank you for taking time away from the hill. Um, we also have several elected uh, council members here as well. We've got uh, at-large council member John Cooper is here, right back there. We have uh, council member Mina Johnson, council member, where's Mina? Council member Russ Pulley, council member Robert Swope, council member Freddie O'Connell, whose district we are sitting in, uh, council member Berkeley Allen, Council Member Angie Henderson. Did I miss any council members? And let me tell you why. We are currently getting ready to go through the budget finalization process, and I'm trying to be very nice to them. And so I think you guys are all fabulous. Okay. I also have a lot of my team here. Uh, Mark Sturdivant came, when I came into uh, office, Create, help me create the Office of Infrastructure that creates the, the conversations between all of these departments so that we are when we are doing bicycles and sidewalks and transit and all these other pieces, that that's being coordinated. Mark, I know you're here somewhere. And other folks with Mark is Aaron H. Aaron's right there. Uh, Mary Beth Eichert, and that completes our team. We also have uh, Doug Sloan from the planning side who spends lots of time on this. And Michael Cass is also here, and so is Joseph Woodson from my staff. So it's great to be with all of you. The steering committee, I understand, had a, a great first meeting on, on Thursday, and it is wonderful to see all the collaboration from all the metro departments. I think that that's the one thing that Nashville can really improve on, and that is making sure that when we're talking together, we are coordinating all these pieces. And let me give you an example. Uh, yesterday, I had the pleasure of having Mark Macy and Mark Sturdivant and Scott Potter and uh, a representative from NES um, and all of us spent time looking at a poll. Where do you think that poll was? <laughs> yes, it was in a sidewalk. 
Um, but we are doing a new sidewalk here. So this is the opportunity to accommodate moving that pole. And with, with the, the, the idea behind public works and a complete street, we can say now, in order to put in a sidewalk, let's put in a grassy verge. And then you can create that grassy verge and you can put the pole there. So as we try to relocate poles to make sidewalks more accessible, we're also focused on bike lanes as well. Because what we want to hear from you is what you want. And I understand that over 1,500 people have already taken the survey um, and that there are already 2,700 comments up on that interactive map. And that's just the beginning. Because as we look at that website, if you want to go to NashvilleWalkAndBike.com for details about future meetings, please do, because this is about community engagement. When I came into office uh, back in the fall, we took a look at the last time there had been a strategic plan for sidewalks and bikeways. And that plan had not been updated since 2008. And all of us know that Nashville has changed dramatically since 2008. So what this process is gonna do is actually identify the strategies and specific recommendations to increase the number of people who are able to walk and bike. We're going to improve safety, connectivity, convenience, attractiveness for all the pedestrians and bicycle networks. And all of those are gonna to lead to a conversation I was part of earlier this morning, which is about quality of life. I mean, I just was talking to a gentleman here who said he'd moved from Chicago and he said he came here for our greenways. He came here because there's that component of Nashville. And greenways are part of this conversation, too. So if you look at what other cities around the United States have found regarding bike lanes and creating that low-stress bikeways, you'll see an increase in bike ridership. You'll also see reduced motor vehicle speeding. You see reduced crashes. And you improve that feeling of feeling safe on a street. And I'll tell you, I saw that the other day, too. We we're also building another sidewalk um, over near the Edge Hill neighborhood. And if you drive down there right now, you'll see that what they are doing is that street, the sidewalk came right up to the street. And, and when you've got cars that are whisking by you, you don't feel safe on that, on that sidewalk. So again, in the idea of a complete street, we're putting a sidewalk there that will have a grassy verge. In order to do that, we had to put in a wall to kind of shore up some of the, um, the, the soil. But it's about making those investments in our city so that you will actually get people to be on that sidewalk. Because if, it's, if you're not going to get on the sidewalk, then it's not going to help us. We also just had a conversation recently about uh, Franklin Road and Melrose, you know, going down toward Melrose, and about how we can imagine that street to have more bicycle lanes and more sidewalks, and how would we create this environment where you would get folks on a bike on that? And it means reconstructing the lanes. It means rethinking how you paint lanes. Um, and oftentimes, a little bit of spray paint can go pretty far. Um, just ask Google. Um, is there anybody here from Google? So none of this we can do alone. Um, we need all your help to help uh, engage in this process. The Walk Bike Steering Committee has an expansive group of folks who make it up. There's nonprofit organizations, there's citizens, there's safe agencies, there's business leaders, and all of this plan needs to, for all of you to come together to help us put this uh, in, into place. I think that ultimately a city and its safety are critical whether that's with a, the idea that I can walk out of my house and feel safe because I live in a low crime area, whether that's I can walk out of my house and feel safe because I can get on a sidewalk, whether that's I can walk out of my house and catch a bus that uh, I can get to to the next place, that safety component is a baseline. And many of you may remember about a year ago, the, the young woman who was, was killed, who was the Hume Fogg student. She was the pedestrian. And with that, and, and from a lot of the activism from the, the kids who were her friends, we have made efforts to go toward Vision Zero. Vision Zero is no pedestrian deaths. But we only get there if we actually take the, the measure of what we are doing now and change it. You will see those crosswalks downtown that got painted recently that are now a crosshatch. That's a safer way to, to cross as a pedestrian. It also slows down traffic. And 
although oftentimes the goal is to get from point A to point B as fast as possible, sometimes there are other goals for our streets, and this is going to be so much of what that's gonna drive. So I appreciate all of you being here. I appreciate that I get a chance to, to kick this off. Um, I appreciate again, Mark, everything that you're doing with Public Works and, uh, and Jenna, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm gonna bring you back out, Mark. Great, thank you, Mayor. You bet. Well, it's good to hear from the mayor and what she wants in our plan. And I know I want a plan that's easier to use. Uh, the, the, the maps we have right now are difficult to read. And so I'm hoping that I'm challenging our team to come up with an easy way to interact with our program and, and find out where we are on your particular street or your particular project. With that, I'm going to bring up Matt Hayes. Matt is with Alta Consultants and they are managing uh, our current uh, update to the plan. Thank you, Matt. Mark, appreciate it. Thank you guys for, for having me. I'm gonna try to get this off of here so I can walk around a little bit. Can you guys hear me okay? Um, thank you guys all for being here. This is an incredible turnout. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for that kickoff. Again, my name is Matt Hayes with Alta Planning and Design, and uh, we are a national bicycle pedestrian uh, planning and design firm. Uh, Jennifer is here with me from Alta. Uh, based out of North Carolina. We would do bicycle pedestrian planning and design all across the southeast and all across the country. And the energy here in Nashville is unique. I mean, it's exciting. Compared to the other cities we work in, there's a lot of energy around this topic. And so we're very, very excited. Coming from the elected officials all the way down to all of you who have come today, uh, the interest in this plan. And so just to highlight a couple of things, I want to spend less time talking because we only have until 1.30 uh, to get your input. We have a room across the hallway where we have all stations and opportunities for you guys to give us input. So I want to spend most of our time doing that. So I'm going to just breeze through some project overview information, get you a little flavor of what's going on, and then we'll head across the hallway. But really the purpose of the plan, and I think the mayor identified this to an extent, is to outline the goals, priorities, and policies regarding location of future uh, sidewalks and bikeways, providing a method to, to prioritize the improvements. Our project team, as I mentioned, Alta, but we have three local firms, uh, Civic Engineering, Hawkins, and also MPNF, um, great firms that have been doing the work in this area for a very long time, and especially around this topic area. So we think we have a lot of good, rich national expertise and local knowledge, and we think we have a great team, and all of our firms are represented today, and you'll be able to talk to them after this presentation. You know, we mentioned the steering committee, and I think we have good, broad representation from a number of different departments and agencies. Um, you probably can't read all these. We actually have a board uh, outside in the hallway, so you can get a sense of who all is on that steering committee. Had a great kickoff yesterday, and this is going to be the kind of the guiding body that helps us move through this planning process. She mentioned Vision Zero, and, and we think that's an important focus for this project. And again, this is a national effort, growing effort over the last couple of years where we really want to head towards zero traffic deaths. And you know, just the simple addition of a sidewalk where there is no sidewalk is, according to the Federal Highway Administration, about an 80% crash reduction factor. Just putting a sidewalk where there wasn't a sidewalk. When you add crosswalks and median refuge islands, you're also reducing crashes. So we want to look at the infrastructure there, but we also want to look at the programming that's going to also support uh, this type of uh, initiative. And we think when we do this type of planning, we think about five E's. In this case, we're going to look at six E's. They are engineering, so the infrastructure that goes out onto the, to the ground. Education, how do we educate uh, people about using the road properly? Encouragement, how do we create this culture? How do we have events that get people interested and excited to get out and walk and bike? Um, enforcement, so we can try to build that responsible behavior and, and enforce that type of behavior. Evaluation, a little less exciting, but monitoring our progress as a county and as a city. How are we doing? How are we uh, stacking up to other, other cities? But equity is another piece of this, and we think this is very important, is addressing access uh, to transportation. And, you know, we think there are a lot of the kind of the millennial generation, people who are, think it's cool not to own a vehicle. Um, very different from when we were growing up when you, it was very cool to own a vehicle. Um, so we have people who really want to do it for fun and lifestyle and quality of life. Just get rid of that car and walk and bike everywhere, get on a bus. But we've also got um, communities that may not have a choice. Uh, they may not have access to a vehicle. They may have come on down on some hard financial times. They're really dependent on walking and biking and taking transit for getting around. So there's got to be a plan for everybody, not just for the people who are just excited about it for their, for their personal life. But it is for them, too. It's for everybody. 
So to give you a little bit of a flavor, we have a much more detailed project schedule going forward. This project is going to carry us through to the end of the year. We're very much in this early start of visioning and inventory and analysis. So this is our kickoff where we want to hear from you guys today. Then we'll start moving into the more of the detailed discussions about how do we make recommendations, how do we prioritize those recommendations, how have we been doing it thus far, is there opportunity to do it uh, different and better in the future. And then as we get later into the year, we look into an implementation and action plan. And so that's kind of our general time frame. Much more detail in the other room. We can talk to you more about that later. So from a program history standpoint, you know, there's been a lot going on uh, over the last several years. National Next, how many people in this room were involved in any way in National Next, participated as a member of the public, anything? So you've probably at least heard of it, and National Next was certainly a great uh, effort, uh, just a high-quality award-winning plan that focused a lot on these topics and transportation and access. So we have a very good starting point with National Next. We want to continue to build on that. But we've got In Motion happening. We've got the Parks and Recreation Plan happening. So we want to make sure that we're tying all of our efforts together. We're not operating in separate silos, so we're working very closely on that. Um, Mark made mention that the original plan was in 2003. Uh, the update was in 2008, so here we are in 2016. And you know, cities across the U.S., we recommend updates about every five years. Um, one of the reasons that the mayor uh, mentioned is Nashville has changed a whole lot. Land use has changed, development has changed, growth has happened. But in the industry of bicycle and pedestrian design, there are many, many new innovative treatments that have come online in the last several years. We see a lot of our major cities implementing separated bikeways or cycle tracks. Sometimes protected intersections are becoming a new a popular thing. We've got a new toolbox to work with. So back in 2008, we really only had the bike lane for a bike facility. We've got a lot more in our toolbox. And you guys have implemented some separated bikeways to get you out to Shelby Bottoms Park, for example. How can we continue to do that to encourage more ridership? And that's what we want to do in this plan. So, you know, it's important to talk about the accomplishments. Um, you know, certainly some, uh, you know, the, the diagonal crosswalks that the mayor referenced, the protected bike lanes on 11th and on Davidson, and then, of course, B-Cycle. So there's a lot already happening. Now, Nashville's been recognized as a bronze-level bicycle-friendly community. Our goal is to take it to silver and then, and then beyond. We've got great feedback from that application, so we have a good understanding of what we have to do to improve on, and we'll be looking at that in this process. So we know prioritization is, is probably the most popular topic. We know that the demand for sidewalks uh, is tremendous. We know that people want to have a sidewalk where they live to connect to where they want to go. Uh, but we also have to realize we've got a big county. We've got a lot of demand and a lot of need. And we have to look at how do we prioritize equitably. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail right now. But just so you have a sense, we're really looking at how do we get people to destinations? How do we logically connect people from their house to their school to their place of work? to a community center, to a park or an existing greenway. And so we want to make sure, you know, right now the prioritization is based primarily on destinations, which is very important. But it's an opportunity in this planning process to reinvestigate this, take a look at this with you all. What's working, what's not, how can we improve it? And this is just a start. Um, we're not going to figure it all out today. We've got a number of uh, public workshops coming up. Over the next several months, it'll be focused just on prioritization. So hang with us. Uh, we actually have an opportunity today, and we won't spend much time talking about this right now, but we have a section in the, the back room here on prioritization, so we can start getting some of your initial ideas about what's working, how to weight criteria, and how to score projects, and then new ideas going forward. So public outreach. Um, how many people have been to the website? It's pretty good, pretty good. If you haven't, there is a URL up at the top. Check it out. This is going to be very active throughout the process. We updating this regularly, so any upcoming meetings or blog posts or information you'll, you'll be able to find there. Um, right now, we've got uh, a, a first survey that has been released, and we did this slideshow what yesterday. It's, it's up to it's, I think it's probably past 1,600 responses by now. So great response after just having this up for a few weeks. It's tremendous response compared to other cities that we work in. This is really exceptional. So. And then people have already given us, uh, you know, we asked people who want to stay involved in the plan to give us their email address. We've got 500 new email contacts, and we'll continue to keep you and those folks and others updated throughout the process. So keep driving people to the website for us, have them fill out a survey, and it's a, it's a great place to stay updated. The interactive map is another place to provide input. Um, you can put down points and lines to let us know where there are barriers to walking and biking, where there are are destinations that you want to walk or bike to or routes that you want to use as well. 
This has been blowing up. We've had uh, you know, 1,500 responses just on this interactive map. Some of the results are printed in the other room in case you're interested in seeing what some people are saying. And this is nice because you can hover your mouse over these dots and see a direct comment of what people are saying, and you can comment on that. So if you want to just have some fun, I know when you're just hanging out on a weekend with nothing to do, you can get on this map and just peruse around, see what your neighbors are saying, see if you like it or if you don't like it, and uh, have some fun with it. Um, you know, we're going to have a lot of opportunities for public engagement that we're still talking about. We want to make sure we, we try to hear from, from everyone. But one way you can do this is requesting a walk and bike talk. So if you have a group that you think would be interested, we can come and, and, and give a brief presentation and use it as an opportunity to, to receive feedback. So if you're interested in that, let one of us know on the project team um, or just contact us at that email address and we can talk to you more about that um, in the other room as well. You know, the community outreach strategy is multi-pronged. We have, you know, very much a digital website uh, type of approach, social media, but we realize not everyone has access to those tools or even likes to use those tools. So we want to go out to the community as well. We'll be out at Tour de Nash, at Open Streets Nashville. We're trying to find ways we can leverage existing local community meetings and resources so we can go to the people. So this is just a framework of what we have going forward, but we're going to be building on this uh, throughout the process. So what have we heard so far? In, uh, we've asked in our, in our survey um, if in Nashville walking is a safe, convenient, and practical way, practical way to get from one place to another. Right now we have 83% disagreeing with that. And I tell people um, that we're not alarmed by this. We ask similar questions in, in cities that we work in. And this is a very typical response rate. When you look across the southeastern U.S., you know, and you think about sprawl that's happened in our, in our country since the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, we were building roads and neighborhoods. We were not building sidewalks during that time. Since then, we've put in policies in place to require sidewalks, and now you've got a lot of disconnection. You have a lot of arterials and roadways that just don't have sidewalks. So we've got a lot of work to catch up on, and, and I think that Metro is doing a great job at it. We just have a, a long way to go, and this reflects that. What prevents you from walking more often? That's that lack of sidewalks again. We know that we've got a lot of sidewalks out there, but we still have a long way to go to make it a completely connected network. Um, same question about biking, about 77% disagree that biking's a safe way of getting around. Similar response rate. Again, this is just a kind of a little um, you know, temperature test for us and a little gauge to understand kind of where the public stands on these topics and this, this really helps us. And what prevents you from biking more often? Similar kind of response, a lack of dedicated facilities and space to do it. Roads do not feel safe or the top responses. And again, not too uncommon from what we see in other places that we work. Um, so in the interactive map comments, like I mentioned earlier, we've got about 700 points that people have put on the map already, identifying a barrier or a destination, about 1,200 routes or lines where people have identified routes that they'd like to walk or bike more often or see improvements on. So great response so far, so continue to, to do that. So I'm going to give you um, a little uh, kind of overview of the layout of our input stations, which are across the hallway. So after we finish this presentation, we're all going to go across and, and get your input in those, in those uh, rooms across the way. First off is our sign-in and address map. I know that we kind of had a rush coming in. For those of you who did not sign in, please do so before you leave. So the sign-in tables will still be out here. Uh, make sure you do sign in so we can record your attendance. Um, also put a dot on the map to let us know where you've come from. Um, that'll be fun for us to understand what kind of geographic representation we have today. Um, station two, and one of the first stations you'll see when you walk into the room is just a project overview, previous planning efforts, and program accomplishments. Also that, pro that project schedule in more detail. So if you'd like to read, get some more background, we've got that station for you. Like I mentioned before about the prioritization, we have a board in there that really breaks down in detail how projects are prioritized and scored today. But we also have a board with some open space for you guys to rank these different types of criteria, give us ideas of other ways you think we should be ranking um, sidewalks. So that's a, a station that I think you guys will probably be very interested in. Um, so check that out. We also have a visual preference survey. So we have um, some boards that list different types of bicycle facilities and pedestrian facilities. So let us know what these type of facilities you want to see more of. But it's more of an educational piece so you guys can understand the types of facilities that we'll be recommending in this effort. A little bit of a fun section where it's a little more wide open. Since we're at our kickoff meeting, we wanted this to be very visionary and, and fun. So um, it's wide open for you guys to uh, 
can communicate, and we've got a board set up in another part of the room where we talk. We ask you, what is walking in Nashville right now? What should it be? How is biking in Nashville now, and how should it be? I would bite more if. I would walk more if. So definitely give us your input on that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun for you guys, and it will give us some really good ideas as we start thinking about vision and goals for this study. Another exercise, we'll have maps on tables kind of in the back of the room where you can give us feedback on the maps. If you've already given all the feedback you think you need to on the interactive map, you probably don't need to participate in this. If you haven't had a chance yet, we've got Sharpies and we've got people wet ready to help you. And we'd like to hear from you what are the barriers to walking and biking and what are the destinations you want to reach uh, for walking and biking and then some of those routes to get there. And then finally, we have a, a section on uh, with just some tables and comment forms. This is the same comment form that's online. So if you've already taken it, don't worry about it. You don't need to take it again here. Um, if you haven't taken the survey, this is a good opportunity to just fill a hard copy version out. If you want to take some with you back to your friends and neighbors, feel free to do that. That'd be great. We also have just a comment card that just allows you to share any thoughts you have at all that you want to share with the, the project team. So it's kind of an open-ended question for, for you all. So, you know, um, there are a lot of opportunities to contact us throughout this process. Jason Radinger, Jason, in the back there, he is the uh, bicycle pedestrian coordinator for Metro and officially the project manager for this project. So um, you can reach out to him at any time. The message will get to our project team in some way or another. You can get him at that email address. Um, obviously, go to the website. We've got Twitter uh, handles and Facebook page as well. A lot of opportunities for you to interact and give us feedback. Um, maybe it would be good for, I guess some of our consultants have left. Jennifer, could you stand up? Jennifer Baldwin is on the consultant team. It can help you all today when you walk through the stations. I think Philip and Clifton may have just walked out. The most of our consultant team is already waiting for you guys in the back, and it'll be pretty obvious. They'll be ready to help you. Um, I don't want to open it up to questions right now just because we only have an hour left, and we really want to hear from all of you, and I think the best way to do that is, is in this back room where all these stations where you can flow through and, and give us some feedback. We're happy to take any of your questions um, in the other room, and just thank you guys so much for, for coming today, and let's have some fun. So thanks.